We say that the heat Carnot heat engine is the most efficient heat engine allowed by nature. But why is that? Why can't we heat the Carnot engine? What we're going to do in this video is a little thought experiment. We're going to imagine that there is an engine more efficient than the Carnot engine, and then we're going to find that cookings happen if we allow that to be true. And that will basically mean that what we imagined, the end more efficient than Carnot, must not be realistic. Let's see how this works. So we start with our familiar Carnot. We have a hot reservoir and a reservoir. We take the amount of heat, QH, from the hot reservoir, feed it into the Carnot engine. That produces some work, W, and some of that heat continues into the cold reservoir as QC. And we can write the efficiency of any heat engine as the work output divided by the heat input. So there's our Carnot engine. We know those are uh, possible in principle. Let's imagine something more efficient. So here's our imagined better heat engine, and what makes it better is to get the same amount of work out of our better engine requires a smaller amount, a smaller amount of heat coming in. So W is the same as W, QH prime is smaller than QH, which means that QC prime is smaller than QC. This would mean that the efficiency of our better engine, W divided by QH prime, is greater than the efficiency of our Carnot engine. So the claim in textbooks and in class is that this is impossible. We can't get a heat engine with an efficiency epsilon prime greater than the efficiency of the Carnot engine. And so let's see if we imagine this better heat engine exists. Let's see what kind of kooky things happen. Before we do that, one small step first we have to understand that we can run a Carnot engine in reverse. The Carnot heat engine is a reversible heat engine, which means that we can essentially change the direction of every arrow in our diagram and get something that is still possible in nature. So a normal Carnot engine run forward takes heat from the hot reservoir, sends it to the cold reservoir, and in the process outputs some work. If we run a Carnot engine in reverse, that means that we do work on the engine and that in doing this work we're able to force some heat to go from the cold reservoir up into the hot reservoir. Now this is uh, completely possible in nature. Uh, this is in fact the idea behind um, a refrigerator is we take heat out of the cold food in the refrigerator and we pump it out into the hotter room that the refrigerator is sitting in and that is perfectly allowed by nature. It just means that we have to do some work to make that happen. So this is a Carnot engine running in reverse, and this is going to be part of our thought experiment. Okay, so here we are. We've got a hot reservoir and our cold reservoir, and here's our imaginary heat engine that is better than Carnot. And it's as heat flows from hot into cold, this better engine puts out some work W. Well, let's put at the end of this better engine, let's have the work that it puts out feed into a Carnot engine that we run in reverse. So we stick our Carnot engine on the end here, and we feed some amount W into it. Now remember, because this better engine is more efficient than the Carnot engine, that means for the Carnot to do some amount of work takes a larger amount of heat, which means if instead, if we run the Carnot in reverse, we should get a larger amount of heat out by doing the same amount of work on it. So here's our input and output heat for our Carnot engine. QC is larger than QC prime. QH is larger than QH prime. And this is due to the work that we're doing on our Carnot engine to make it run in reverse. So, okay. A little bit interesting, but might not quite jump out at us yet what's weird about this. Let's take our better heat engine and our Carnot heat engine and stick them in a box. So what we've done is we've bundled together our better engine and our Carnot engine, and we've made it one super engine. And now if we look at what's happening, the overall effect of these four arrows is that heat is flowing from cold into hot. That's happening because the arrows over here going up are bigger, are larger amounts of heat, than these arrows going down. 
And so what we have with this blue box is a device that naturally causes heat to flow from cold to hot. There's no outside work. There's no work arrow going into this blue box. And so without us doing any work, what we're saying happens here is that heat naturally flows from cold to hot. And that simply doesn't happen. Just in our observations of nature, there is never an instance of large scale, so long time scale, flowing of heat energy from cold too hot, which means that this device must be impossible. Well, if two devices exist, certainly we can stick them in a box and make them one device. So the fact that this blue box here, this super engine, can't exist is inconsistent with our observations of nature must mean that this better heat engine that we imagined is impossible. And that is why you cannot make a heat engine more efficient than the Carnot heat engine.